<laughs> Correa ends up in Minnesota. Story stunningly goes to Boston. And Diamond Diehards is on. Joe Rizzo here bringing you baseball along with in person the actual physical legitimate dog <laughs> Jeff Healy. I'm a jinx. We we well <laughs> it only it only took us uh, about two hours to get this set up because you for some reason in this world of hours it's easier to do things over the internet than it is when you're in person. Uh, although I've done this like in my own way a million times over the years with uh, with my other podcast there, Rear Naked Choke Radio. If you're a mixed martial arts fan, you can go check that out. But if you're not, don't worry about it. And uh, nowadays, the technology sort of catching up uh, a, a little too much. And we're trying to figure out the best way to do it. But eventually, we do get it here. And for the first time ever in person, it is Riz and the dog, at least as far as the Diamond Die Hard situation is concerned. Uh, a little special thing. So this is what I was trying to do. Nice. Now we might get banged on. Uh, we might get banged on YouTube for this, <laughs> but I'm I'm gonna bet against that. <laughs> Good so luck. basically, Good this luck is, if you can identify it. If you if know you this listen, song, way back when, yeah, and you would know that what this song means is the last time that Dog and I were sitting next to each other, doing with headphones. A, a show with headphones like this, that song was playing, and that means it's uh, an homage to our Fordham backgrounds and and uh, at WFUV where this thing all started a million years ago, uh, but we bring it to you now. Today, that's what I was trying to get that. I was trying to do the opening, I, but I wanted to surprise you. So I was like, I didn't know if you saw me pulling it up before. I did not see it. That was a good surprise. So, and then, of course, there's like a commercial that plays in front of it. So we, <laughs> at, but we fixed it, I think, in, uh, in post production. And uh, we had to do the opening about 16 times, but I think we, uh, we got it there for you. We got a blooper reel. That uh, we do have a blooper reel. We, we never reel. had a blooper reel. That we do. No, we do. It's that Riz falls on his ass is actually oh, listed rude. in the blooper category. So if I you haven't checked that. that out, that's our, also our most, <laughs> unfortunately, our most viewed video ever. So, um, so we made it. Uh, this is what we d decided to do on a Sunday. It almost ended up being a Saturday, but uh, dog threw too many pitches and. Um, he was gassed, and it worked out better because now we have both shortstops that were left yep. uh, having signed and uh, surprisingly in, in both situations. And uh, it turns out the last one is not even a shortstop anymore. So there, uh, there, there we go. Uh, but they both screwed the Yankees. Well, I, that, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. If my neighbor Paul decides to ring the doorbell, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll directly get into that because that's what that's, you know, he certainly wanted one of those guys or every guy that was going to make, you know, $180 million over 12 years in a contract. But as we always do, we remind you to uh, follow the show here. If you haven't, you know, if you're just checking us out for the first time, we're glad that you're doing it at Diamond Diehards everywhere on social media and if you're on twitter that's you know I'm, I'm pretty active on there at the diamond diehards account you can follow the dog jeff healy at jeff healy eight that's the number eight if you want to patronize our sponsors it's fmsgraphics.com for all your printing and promotional needs the family-owned family-run business for over 50 years fmsgraphics.com printing and promotional needs that's where you get it and if you are in the Bergen County or Passaic County areas in New Jersey and your vehicle is dirty, which it probably is considering it's, uh, you know, March, what is it? March, where's the date there? March, March 20th. 20th, right? So your, your vehicle is almost certainly dirty. Stop at Big Ed's Car Wash in Fairlawn, New Jersey, right on the border of uh, Passaic and Bergen counties, just across the river from uh, Route 20 in Patterson, uh, very accessible place, very easy, and Ed will take care of you. Your car is going to come, or, you, or your truck, your vehicle, is going to come cleaner than it does when it goes to other places. 118-foot tunnel, does everything clean and green. You can't get better than that. And tell Ed that Diamond Diehards sent you. And as we start doing more of these shows in person, we, we hope to get Ed uh, 
with us. So, and he's interested in doing that. I think he just was in uh, Chicago for St. Patrick's Day because that does it right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Another feature that we do on nearly every show is Veteran of the Day. Dog is our veteran emeritus, Army veteran. And uh, what we like to do is we honor somebody. Sometimes it's somebody we know. Sometimes it's somebody we've never heard of. And sometimes it's somebody from 280 years ago. And sometimes it's somebody from the Ukraine. And today it's my brother-in-law because we didn't have a veteran of the day. And we spent so much time scrambling. And he was here. So he got to meet Dog for the first time. That was very nice. So I will turn it over to Dog for veteran of the day. Yes, once again, a very special one and a fan of the show, so that's even better to put on there. So, yes, our veteran of the day is uh, Corporal Paul Gatto, served in the United States Marine Corps, uh, started out um, started out on the admin side and then moved over to intelligence. It's a pretty high speed on there and uh, made it up to the rank of corporal and went up serving, uh, serving and finished up his term out in Hawaii, which sounds pretty darn nifty to me. So... Uh, uh, so yes, yeah, great a uh, great time seeing seeing a meeting uh, one of uh, my fellow veterans out there. So uh, Corporal Port Gatto, United States Marine Corps, Semper Fi, our veteran of the day. Always a good one to get in there, and of course, uh, uh, let, let's see if I can if I can get the uh, the, the chat open here. Now, now everything. Now we're really like. We're up against it here because you know we can't we can't hide. We know there's no virtual background. <laughs> I'm trying to pull up the uh, let's see if I can do it here. The chat here, where so we could get everybody. G -G, you know, chat, and chat. It's not work. It's not being friendly here we go, to me. It. I'll have it in a sec. Oh wait, here we go. Wait, uh, yeah, you'll have it there, but you'll have to do that one. I'll have to do this one, and let's see if I get it over here. Uh, nobody wants to hear this part, but they certainly, eh, you know, it just doesn't want to yes. click to expand today. Yes. So. <laughs> If you're on there, we're glad that you're there. And if you're not, then don't worry about it. So, Dog, the first stunner, right? The first stunner is that Correa ends up in Minnesota. But it's kind of not that much of a stunner because if you think about it, right, they, they kind of like made this trade with the Yankees and they had a bunch of parts and they sort of like opened up the spot. I guess people are just not used to the Twins paying somebody $33 million a year. The thing is, it might only be for one year. It's a three-year, $105 million deal, but he's got opt-outs after each of the first two years, right? Yeah. So it could be a one-year deal worth $33 million, or it could be a three-year deal worth $105 million. If, you know, he, if he gets hurt or he underperforms, then he'll just stay, and he'll just keep renewing the contract, and the Twins will be a little bit over the barrel, but probably not much. I thought the whole time, that they were going to go after Story. He seemed like a pretty good fit there to me. Um, but I guess they, you know, decided to make the move on, on Correa. I feel like Story would have come at, at a cheaper price, but uh, it doesn't happen that way. And the Twins end up with the Correa at, you know, a, 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 for what I like, which is give them more money in the short term, give them less years. Because that tends to work out for the team – especially when you're against not necessarily a, a salary cap or, uh, a, you know, the luxury like tax, reason, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it, if you just look at the way teams are put together, the teams that have the high payrolls like that, the ones with the albatross, con the albatross contracts at the end, they usually end up having a problem. And the teams without that are the ones that are usually a little bit more able to compete. So the Twins, they could spend this money. Even if Correa stays there and he's like just slightly above league average, which is probably, I mean, I don't know. I guess the worst case scenario is he gets hurt and you still have to pay him. But it, it, the real world most likely scenario is that he's probably going to be a top, you know, 10 at least shortstop, maybe even in the upper echelon of that. And, you know, if he's, Somewhere, even if he's the fifteenth best shortstop, he's probably not going to be worth the money. But he's, you're going to have a good team. So not really that much to lose. And if he underperforms, then you're going to be stuck with him. But then that, that increases the chances that he's going to perform better in year two or year three. And after that, you know, if you still want him and you still like him, you could re up. But otherwise, you know, you're you're done and you can move on to the next guy. Yeah, I mean, I I think uh, I think the Twins won it. 
right? The whole uh, the whole shortstop uh, sweepstakes we've been talking about for uh, for the last year or so, um, they cleaned up. They totally nailed that contract. I mean, especially I think especially a story um, like Story's numbers coming right after it. You're like, geez, this you know, career for career for three years, 105 seems like a heck of a better deal than uh, uh, than Story. And I was commiserating about my my Lindor from last year that. Um, you know, a bunch of these teams having to go long and pay big money for long contracts. And like you said, this is three years. You get one of the best guys out there. You're paying you're paying up, but you're not. You know, honestly, I would have thought this would be more like $40 million if you're going for like that sort of a one-year sort of short-term one like that. Well, I mean, this guy, I think it's a phenomenal deal on that. And, you know, again, kind of turn back to the, to the Yankees and stuff. Like, geez, that kind of seemed like that would kind of work for the Yankees too. Right, and the ironic thing is that you know the, and we like and we like to trade, right? I mean, fairness. I'm not going to go back and say I didn't like to trade because I did like to trade, the the Donaldson and uh, and uh, IKF um, pickup and get rid of Sanchez, but ironically, it did wind up taking you out of um, likely contention for Correa, and basically put the Twins in contention for Correa. So, I mean, I think really you know great job on the Twins actually going out and being able to execute on both sides of that trade. I mean, it's always one that's like an easy one to talk up, but it's pretty hard to actually transact in real life. And uh, I think the Twins did a great job on it. So that sets them up for this short-term window, and they get the one guy that like really seems to be a Yankee killer, right? Yep. Like he's just – you just look at his, his baseball reference and, and you know, postseason, it's like – Beat the Yankees, beat the Yankees, beat the Yankees. <laughs> and that's the one thing the Twins can't do. Yeah. So maybe that in the end was the thing where they're like, you know what? This is, this is, this is like what we got to do. Like we got we to gotta get this guy. If we can't build it, buy it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Okay, we'll buy it. Uh, so I, and it's at a good price. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was um, again, the economics of baseball are different for the Twins than they are for the Yankees, than they are for the Dodgers, than they are for the Cubs and the Pirates and the Royals. You know, they're – they're, they're, it's just it's just different, yeah. and you know we did hear that the Orioles were supposedly in on Correa. But if you're Correa and you're going to get, you know, what would you rather? Which deal would you rather sign? Who would you rather go to? Yeah, you know, Minnesota is going to be a very friendly park for him to to play in, both offensively and defensively. He's got a very good team around them, and he's got one team in the division to beat, the White Sox, who are potentially pretty good. But even if they don't win the division. They're still playing the rest of that division, and yeah. or you know, I, I don't know if they're a shoe in for the wild card because it depends a little bit on the pitching. But I'd bet them to make the playoffs. Let's say that, yeah. you know, and, and beforehand would I have bet them to make the playoffs? Yeah, maybe, but now I would bet them for sure to make the playoffs because they can contend for the division, and if they can contend for the division, they're certainly going to be in the mix for for a wild card. Yeah. So from there, it makes a lot of sense. And again, you're if you're the Twins. You can't just look at business today. You have to look at business today and in two years, three years. You have to look at it, look at it on a year-to-year basis. And even in the worst-case scenario, it's, it's going to hurt them if he doesn't play or if he really just completely falls off a cliff, which nobody is predicting, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, he's given you no indication of that. He does have an injury history a little bit, right? Yeah. And he does have... Uh, he, he can be a little bit streaky. Like sometimes his, he's a better player than his numbers indicate, I would say. Yeah. Um, so and he it, might not put up some crazy gaudy numbers, but he might, but he also, but he might. Yeah. And right. he's obviously ridiculously clutch too, right? I mean, if you look at, and if you look at like, you know, stuff you're worried about, like, like that's sort of one argument I had a little bit with Donaldson that, you know, he might be coming over the peak. It's a little tough to tell in the whole COVID times. So I think it's, it's, it's tough to extrapolate that. But it does seem like he might be kind of coming into the peak. So if you look at who was going to decline more in those two years, Donaldson or Correa. I mean, it's 100% Donaldson, right? Because right? yeah, exactly. one guy's So if you, you look at like right? what, what they traded off, right? So I mean, you, you, you effectively moved Donaldson, IKF, and I guess the catcher kind of thrown in. And you got Sanchez, Michella, and Correa. And put in maybe 8 or $10 million to make that happen. I mean, that's a home run. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> and now just getting just... Correa would be a great one. And like, no, by the way, you also got Sanchez, who's a great stick, and Gio, who I think is a good player. Wait, now Sanchez is a great stick? When did that happen? Players, so you can't play catcher, but <laughs> 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 can't, 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 can't hit. hit. 
<laughs> can't hit, can't play catcher. Can't play catcher. Watch anything. We'll see. I mean, he hit some home runs. He yeah. could hit some home runs, but yeah. I, you know, he's it, look, I mean, big power, big power. Right, you're gonna deal. You know, you're gonna deal with him behind the plate. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You want him in there, uh, ninth inning, three three, runner on third, and your closer has to throw a curveball. Well, no. In the dirt uh, on a one two pitch. Rough one? five two because Correa Ray hit a home run for me. <laughs> maybe not. That's Sanchez. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. He, it, well, he, oh, he has to pad himself. Oh, did we signify that it was game one of the series? <laughs> Sanchez had a home run. No, it's not game four, right? Um, so the other thing is that that now instead of Urshela being your your shortstop over there, he's your third baseman. So your left side of the infield yep. is really you know. It defensively nice, nice is stuff. about yeah. as good as it's going to get anywhere, yep. right? Yep. Then you have the whole thing. So Okay, so there's your twins thing. We've talked a lot of twins. Lately. That's good. Between the trade with the Yankees and, and this, twins yeah. are making news. If you're a twins fan, this is your podcast now. <laughs> Got to be in on it. Um, story was adamant apparently the whole way that he really wanted to play shortstop. I guess there are some questions about it. it two things. His, a little bit about his arm, and a, a certainly about his home road splits, where for Colorado, he was a spectacular player at home and what you know you probably would call a, an average shortstop offensively, probably still above average, even with like bad road splits, although there's a lot of good shortstops. So he's probably like league, league average as a, as a road shortstop. But the thing is, even on the road, like he's playing great defense. Yep. So if he happens to be spectacular at home and he happens to be not, you know, spectacular on the road, I feel like the change of scenery for a guy like that is going to result in whatever new park he goes to, his home numbers are not going to be as good, but his road numbers are going to rise because there's not such a discrepancy in what he's doing anymore. Now all the parks are similar in some way, right? Like, because... Coors Field is a unicorn, right? Yep. It, it, it just, you just play different there. Your approach is different there. And you just know that there's going to be more offense when you're, when you're playing there. So, so that would make a lot of sense that, you know, we've seen it time and again over the years that there are most players who play a Coors Field have tremendous home splits and not as good road splits. Yep. Well, TJ LeMahieu is a pretty good recent example, right? Right-handed hitter. Middle infielder, won a batting title in Colorado, came to the Yankees. What did he do? Won a batting title. Yep. Has, and, and he's had, you know, a really, really great year with the Yankees, and he's had, you know, what felt like a, a big drop-off year. But again, you have the whole COVID thing mixed in too. Yep. So he's another guy that, that kind of falls into that, yep. you know, Donaldson area where you're like, well – you know, these guys are like Donaldson's going into his age 36 year. LeMay, who's going into, I think, his age 33 year. And you wonder a little bit like what the drop off has been. You expect that there's going to be some tailing down, right? You you hope that it's a slow decrease plane, but sometimes it's not, right? And sometimes you hit that one year where a guy just falls off a cliff. Well, LeMahieu compared to previous years kind of felt a little bit too much for people's liking. But that doesn't mean he's not just going to bounce back in a, in a real-world regular scenario this year. So for a guy like Story, I've been high on him. Like, I thought he would have been a pretty good guy for the Yankees before they got uh, Isaiah kiner falefa uh, I thought he'd be a good guy to get to fill shortstop for a few years until Volpe or whoever, one of the other three, are ready. But, it, you know, let's just say Volpe because he's been the guy we've been going with. Yep. And, uh, you know, Will he be ready next year? He might be ready or ready next year. Might be ready this year. Who knows? But Story projects to me as a guy who is a good athlete, great glove guy, really understands the way fielding works, not just as, you know, a, a great defensive shortstop, but in course field. You know, I think you do get a little bit more of a feel for how to play maybe more positions just because you're seeing so much more offense, right? And – he projected it to me as a guy who could, you know, eventually move over to third or even play, you know, have a second career as like a center fielder, which is a place where the Yankees would have potentially an, an opening. Now, I didn't love the fact that he was another right handed bat, but if you were removing Kiner Falefa and Donaldson from 
the mix and you put him in there and then you would still have, say, Urshela, well, even if you didn't have him. But, you know, after they made this trade, it didn't make as, as much sense. So I understand why the Yankees might not have gone as hard after Story. But he gets a bigger deal, right? He gets a six-year deal for, what, 20, uh, 22 million or something a year? Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Something so for the Red Sox, and he, and he says, oh, I'll go play second base. Yeah, they're, uh, they're pulling the Yankees there. So we have a really good defensive shortstop. So let's go put them in seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that that one does seem like a bit more of a head scratcher uh, to me. I, mean, I guess the Red Sox just hadn't done anything. So they, they I think they want to, you know, they do like to try and make a splash. So I think they, they went ahead and uh, and did that. Um, you know, we'll see. I, mean, I was thinking like Arenado when you were sort of talking to, it was like another one too where it was like, oh, if he, you know, he's, he's like the dangerous um, you know, Coors Field, and then you know he kind of did okay outside of Coors Field. Too. He did, yeah, right. Very, so, so that <laughs> has yes. not been a problem. Yeah, exactly. So there, there's a couple. Of, there's a couple more recent examples where guys are are able to adjust, and you're not seeing the, uh, you know, the the tremendous drop off when you when when you exit uh, exit Coors Field. So where does this leave the Red Sox? Right, like have they vaulted in? Uh, that, you know, difficult AL East pecking order at this point. I mean, because it's one guy like that, that's kind of, you know, is, is a little bit of, a, of, of an excess there. And what if, now, how about this dog? Who has a better chance of flopping and who has a better chance of, you know, giving his team the full value of the contract? Uh, who are we talking about? Korea. Between the two shortstops that we're talking about. Korea and Story. Yeah. Uh, I would say Story is more of a likelihood of dropping off. I think the Korea, I think, is, is tradition been more, uh, uh, been more consistent. So I think uh, I think for both the first year and certainly for the life of the contract, um, I would definitely take Korea over uh, over Story. And also because there's just less risk, right? Yeah, exactly. There's less risk. There's yeah. more financial risk, but it's for a much shorter time. Yeah. So by definition – there's just less, right? Like yeah. there's less years, less dollars total. Yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Easier, yeah. easier to get out. You, your residual value, right, um, will be way higher. Like if you got a, I mean, it's in the bolts, like you need to get a cent. But, you know, if Minnesota is doing terrible, could they go and trade Correa for someone for the run? Sure, absolutely. Right? I don't know. Well, did so, they give him a no right. trade? I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing he did, right? I'm guessing all those guys kind of have that. So, but, but, but let's just say like Minnesota is doing terrible, right? And, Correa would like to go to someone else, knowing he's got the opt out anyway, right? So it becomes it becomes a quick a quick rental that he can go back and get value out of uh, right away. Whereas you know, story you, you're not going to have that. I was like, I don't we know about the I don't know about the opt outs or anything it's like that on there, but you still have a six year tail, right? So no one no one's going to take that um, that you have a potential you know I'm going to guess a guy who could opt out, but also has a six year tail of. If he if he does terrible, gets injured or whatever, you're going to pay out forever. Whereas at least with Correa, yeah, you got an opt out guy. So if he does great for any opts out, okay. Um, and worst case, you have two more years. A guy who's maybe at, a little disappointing. At some point, do they make these opt out contracts illegal? <laughs> it's funny. I I was thinking the same thing. That how much power has gone to the players? Yeah. Right. And all we heard was like how how awful it was for the players and how terrible it was for the players and stuff. I'm like. It seems like the players have been on a pretty sweet roll for the last couple of weeks or so. Like everything kind of went their way in in, uh, in negotiations, and yeah, these one-year options. It's basically you know they have all the power now, and the clubs have all the tail of like you underperform. I mean, one thing if you went back to year-by-year contracts, kind of way back on on that, and uh, yeah, that's you know that's probably great for maximizing value for both sides in there. But now it's like the players get all the upside and. The teams have a wind up getting stuck with uh, extension risk on all these guys. But let's face it: if not for the opt out type situation, the Twins probably never sniff Correa. True, true. Like that, they would have to have given more years to a guy and incurred more of that long term risk. Yep. And and you know, gone for what Story was asking for. Yep. So yeah. I mean, it'd be interesting if you start to see options either way. You haven't seen too much. I don't, I don't know if too many contracts off the top of my head on that where you have too many of those. There's, there's a couple like you've seen along the way, but not too many where you have like you know options both ways from the player and the team. But yeah, there's the, but they but that's rare though. They're rare. Yeah, but yeah. that was that was starting to come in, and then it seems like that kind of died out again. 
Yeah, but so, I, I, it's like it's off years too, right? So it's like one year's a player option, next year's a team option, whatever. But uh, let's talk about the Yankee perspective here for a moment. We don't really have to talk about the Mets because they, when they had the chance, they they just <laughs> grabbed, right? Like they didn't they didn't wait. Yeah. Um, I, listen, even going back to Lindor, right? They signed him practically a year ago. We just talked about this in our pre-show meeting where we're like, I was on the Puma plan, the Mike Puma yeah. plan, when Mike was on with us. And, you know, I, I thought, yeah, like there's th – the shortstop market is going to be so overwhelming. There's really no reason to sign him. You don't have to pay him that. Like, And if he performs to the top of his abilities, like the best season that he's ever had, like – they would have given him the contract that they gave him. Yeah. And they gave him the contract and, that they gave him. And we got a great year out of it to begin with, right? Not really. No, I'm saying, like, if, if you played it out. Oh. And he got for a great contract. He did a great year when he's going to go for a great contract. A you, a, you got the great performance, which I think was Mike's sort of point. Yeah. Of like, make, you know, make him, make him earn his supper. Yeah. Right? And, you know, and compete against every other team out there. But we saw yeah. that the market for these shortstops – was not going to be great for the for you know from a player perspective, yeah. and that's exactly how it turned out. The, and as usual, like in the housing market, first offer, best offer. Corey Seager, smartest guy, right? Yep. Francisco yep. Lindor, smartest guy. Right, bud. Tatis. Take, take yep. those, take those first. Yeah, Tatis, right? Yeah. And now look at him. He's how many? Uh, you know how 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 was the effect of the motorcycle accident? Which one? <laughs> that's not a good sign. <laughs> that's not a good sign for your. No, you know, no. franchise shorts up who people are already questioning defensively. I can't really make like that much of an assessment on him defensively yeah, I mean, yet. It's, it's a so fairly not, shorter period, right? But yeah, I'm not, and it, you know, he's we'll really see. young yeah. and I'm not watching him like every single night, you know? Um, so it's hard to, it, it, it's hard to make that assessment. But the fact that there's questions about it, I mean, listen, there were questions about Derek Jeter's defense. It didn't, you know, that didn't, it didn't yeah. seem to matter. <laughs> It wasn't, I mean, riding, it wasn't riding motorcycles, so. though. Well, that you know of. <laughs> there, we know. There, there were a lot of things that, were, that Jeter was doing that we may or may not know of. <laughs> so you got this whole situation, right? And you're the Yankees. So like we said, the Mets, you know, we, we, we put them at the Dodgers. They kind of went and did their thing. They let Kenley Jansen go, which was a little bit of a surprise. Like I just figured yep. he was going to be like Kershaw and just resign, and he, and he left. But the Yankees, right? My neighbor, Paul. <laughs> oh, my God. Does he rake me over the coals? Prototypical Yankee fan? Oh, Paul is the best. Um, so here's my neighbor, Paul. He's all over me. How can you think that Freeman is not a better player than Rizzo? Why would you want Rizzo over Freeman? I'm like, first of all, he's cousin Anthony. Like, that's what <laughs> I, I got to have cousin Let's Anthony. Let's be clear about this. <laughs> Let's just, you know. It, Second of all, we... We time traveled already. We knew the answer. Yeah. So we it, break our chops. So we got us. that. Like we got that. <laughs> and he's like, you know, a defense first guy who gets hit by a lot of pitches. It's like a total Riz thing. Like it just you don't, you know, you, you may or may not get it, but dog gets it. So to me, is Freeman better than Rizzo? Of course he's better. But is Freeman at thirty two with a six year deal giving him, you know, thirty million dollars a year better than Rizzo at two years, thirty-two million. Well, I mean, his argument is, yeah, but you need the best guy to get in there. Like you haven't, you haven't won in a long time, and the reason is because you haven't brought in guys like that, probably. But there's so much risk involved. I mean, in, the, in, the, hit, the hitting has been the problem, right? I mean, I, it's, that's where I just, I think that breaks down. Like, I think we we talked about this last year, right? The problem with the Yankees is really more the fit. Right? Yeah. You have plenty of guys who could hit the ball. Yeah. Right? You, had, you had five or six guys all sit there, all can mash, all are odd base guys, right? But you didn't have the, you know, the average guy, the, um, you know, the, the defense guy, um, the lefties, up. right? Exactly. Like the, the whole mix of it just wasn't there. So the whole like, oh, we need another masher. Well, no, not really. That's, you know, that's, that's well, what not, he says is, is, is Freeman's a better version of Rizzo offensively. That, that he's still giving you, he's giving you that, but he's giving yeah. you even more of that. He's not reliant on the home run, right? He's he can put the ball. He strikes out more than Rizzo does. That's but fair, but you you do have another sixteen million that you can go to 
get another pitcher, get you know, well. Then his argument is fielder. his argument is you're the Yankees. Money's no object. Even if you go over the luxury tax, who cares? You your franchise prints money. So if every that, dollar that you go over is double dollars, well, guess what? You're that's what your fans are asking for because they support you like no other team is is supported. It's not a bad argument. Yeah. I mean, I just go back to it's Rizzo. <laughs> To me, that's good enough. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's interesting. The Yankees have not been the the spend wild franchise in a couple of years, right? And you know, like people are making a point that if if they are going to have some more, um, uh, I won't say fiscal <laughs> austerity, but let's just like say a little bit more in line with, with spending. You know, someone makes a good point of, hey, you know, you got Judge coming up, and he's going to get a ridiculous contract coming up on there if you if you're staring at a tail of four or five years of, of freeman over there pulling out a bunch of dough do you have all the money to sign all those different guys you know i don't know well here's the right? thing you know if the, you if you had trevor story for six years right is that the same thing again right does that eat up into uh, your potential right if a career three-year deal you could probably structure around and with the judge extension if you had a six-year story deal maybe not it's the albatross contract thing. And you have one already with Stanton. You have the, the landlocking albatross contract. It's vital that Stanton plays as many games in the outfield as he can stand for the length of that contract. Every single game that he plays in the outfield is better for the franchise as a whole because it opens up more spots for other people to get rest and just gives them that, that wee bit of flexibility that they need. Because you know what? In the end, he's not. He's gonna have to only DH because he's, you know, he's just gonna age out of being able to play the field. Even guys like Nelson Cruz, like Nelson Cruz, did it until really like he couldn't do it anymore. But Nelson Cruz can still hit, and he's like 41, 42. So, you know, he's signing one-year deals worth 12 to 15 million dollars. But like Stanton is gonna give you hopefully that production into his age what 39 season, and. You know he's still going to cost you thirty something million dollars. It, it and and he's going to have to play right because he's making that money. That's the other thing. So it's the dynamic inside of the 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 clubhouse. It's the player to management dynamic. Where at some point are you going to say, "We got John Carlos Stanton. He's making thirty one and a half million dollars this year, and you know he's hitting two fifty with eighteen home runs." And, uh, you know, a, a, a 312 on base and it's uh, August 18th, you know, yeah. like he's there's other guys that we could be putting in. The Mets are sort of like at the end of that rope with Robinson Cano. But look at look at what's going on with the Mets right now, dog. You look at the composition of their roster and if you just list it the way that it ought to be listed like Dominic Smith is your fourth outfielder, but he's not really your fourth outfielder. He's your half DH, half first base guy. Yeah. So they don't even have like another guy that's that's a regular fourth outfielder. And then you have Buck Showalter saying Jeff McNeil is going to be pretty much the everyday third baseman. He might move around here and there, but mostly it's just going to be McNeil at. at, at did second. I say second? I yeah, meant yeah. I meant second. I said yeah, third. Yeah. I meant second. I got you. But Jeff McNeil's the only other guy on the roster that, that could play the outfield. <laughs> so what are you going to do? You're going to put Lindor out there? You're not going to put Lindor out there, I can tell you that. I'm going to go sign Conforto. Well, that's we the want, We thing. want all the toys. You might, you might, you might <laughs> have might. to. We might get them, yeah. Which was funny. That's something you completely wouldn't consider pr uh, prior to that. Um, yeah, it's interesting. But about, I, oh, wait, 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 there is a guy. Yeah, go ahead. The guy that, that I think the Mets should sign. Who's that? And I waited to say I was going to tweet it. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm just going to say it on the show. Dexter Fowler, perfect, perfect, perfect he's fit been, for the Mets. He's been Switch, pointed to him repeatedly, and uh, I like it hitter. each time. Yep. He's, okay, he's coming off the knee. Switch hitter, winner, Yep. will do anything for a team, phenomenal clubhouse guy. You need a guy like that to win. Yep. And, and he's just sitting there. He, he's not going to... You're not going to have to pay him anything. He's 35, and he just wants a job. He can still manage center if he needs to. Yeah. They don't really need him to. Yeah. Really good still defensively at the corners. 
And, and if you need him to, you know, if, if somebody gets hurt and you need him to play six straight games in center, I, I'm sure he'll, he'll, he's not going to kill you. Yep. Dexter Fowler is the perfect guy for the Mets to sign. But you, then you need to move on from somebody else in that, in that mix. Right? Yeah. And I mean, it's got to be J.D. Davis. Right? Yeah, what else? Or Guillaume. Maybe Guillaume. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Davis is the one that, that kind of people keep coming back to that, you know, can you have Davis, Dom, McNeil, Cano, all kind of swirling around sort of like two spots in the lineup or so. And that's where, you know, J.D. – like J.D. Davis, Kent, to me, could be a really good D.H. Yeah. Um, Smith and Alonzo, one of those two, would be a really good DH as well. Um, so they probably have one of those guys probably has more value to somebody else to kind of you know get some bullpen or get some prospects for you know as we as you start to look at the Mets, right? I mean, you have a Scherzer, you have you have Degrom, like they're going to need to restock some of the pitching. Like they've some of their best prospects now are, are sort of the, the position players. Um, if you're into the competing every year that that Cohen talks, you know that's what you probably need to do with like a guy like a Davis. I mean, Cano you're stuck with, so that's it. But uh, but it's only one more year, of Cano, right? Or is it? I, I think it's one, right? I think this is the I last think it's, one. Yeah, I think it's a year after this one. Oh, is it? Yeah, so I think it's this year and the next year, I think. Man. So. Brutal. It was rough. <laughs> hey, I said this it at the, the beginning. Oh, you did. You I, did. You were you're on. You were spot on on that one. So that one that one hurt. Although Diaz has has turned, it's, has turned it's not as awful anymore. <laughs> and it's Ke- not. Ke- Kellenic cooled down after. Uh, well, actually, he, he had a cool start and then kind of started to bring it up, and then he's been kind of hurt. But yeah, seeing seeing when he goes off and does could uh, could make that still painful. Yeah. And, and you're still seeing like the the albatross, so like that. That's kind of going to back to. It's like the big market teams can have an albatross contract, right? One. one. You can exactly. have one. Even a exactly. big market team can't have more than one. Look yeah. what the Red Sox did. The, remember the Red Sox had all those horrible contracts? Yep. And they, the Dodgers got them out of it. Adrian Gonzalez, Carl Crawford. They traded all those contracts to the Dodgers, and it completely turned the, dog the franchise around. <laughs> Not bold. What? A, the dog bald. <laughs> Very gray haired. Definitely not bald. The That's, dog, yeah. There's no, there's no Healy's ever gone bald. You can knock whatever you want. That is not a <laughs> Neil. We, we, we uh, don't okay. do that. So so on the chat, uh Neil Sorry. Carson looks like a rug. Is asking if the if the dog is bald. That is wow. so not a rug. Wow. You can go back and, and it's there's, a little it's a little overgrown. I'll give you a, that. So is mine. <laughs> mine my cabbage has to get cut. Yeah. No, there's uh there's very good evidence of the dog having that, that head of would hair. I, would you pay for this? You yeah, yeah. That would be a bad job. <laughs> nice and dark, maybe. <laughs> it could be a rug. No rug. No rug. No rug. No rug. No rug. All right. Work on that move on, Neil. Work on that move on. No rug. So it does look a bit stand to this right now. I will give you that. It's it's a disaster. I've been trying to fix it. Well, you were actually talking about the light. You're like, man, this light's the really light. It's not helping my, me out. It's right not now. helping me out. <laughs> and me, I got like the reflection on my on my forehead. I'm like, I yeah. might go have to go ahead. I'm like, you yeah, know Rick, what? Rick is trying to get just, a confession out of me. All right, fine. The Cano deal sucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It's like we're in the freaking confessional right, over here. That's it. It it's uh, okay. So we got uh, Jason George Hatterbank Senior checking in. I have no issue. With the Yankees' new spending habits, but they need to do it wisely. I think that the issue is that Cashman is trying to put a representative team on the field while setting the team up for the future. He has done that. Rizzo was only two years with a player option. Donaldson, two years, etc. Puts them in line to be able to play their kids. I still think the Yankees may find pitching before opening day. I agree. Jason's with, a great baseball guy. With the, spot on that. Yeah, I, so, I, I agree with Yankee that. Fan and, the whole and I, I don't know if it's going to be before opening day. They do have a little bit of flexibility there, and yeah. I think there's a chance that some teams really might want to kick the tires on some guys and not rush into it because of the truncated spring training. Um, Joe, Sarah. See how guys come out of it too, right? Yeah, I mean, of thing, course. It's, everyone's going to be, I mean, it seems so far like we haven't seen any major blow-ups, thank God, or any you know quick injuries because guys are trying to jump into it pretty quick. But, yeah, it, I, I agree. You might, it might pay to sort of take your time on a little bit and, yeah. uh, and see how everything kind of comes out of the gate. I mean, you know, if you're the Mets, you get to – you get to June, you need a little bullpen help, trade J.D. Davis to the Phillies for Juris Familia. <laughs> That's so wrong. 
You can imagine, can have can imagine the system back. He would, J.D. Davis would hit like 40 home runs. <laughs> back now. Back. 20 against the Mets. <laughs> yeah. uh, Joe Sarah says Stanton hits better and gets hurt less when he plays outfield. Put him in outfield often. Go back to the uh, April 29th, 2021 episode. You will hear me say that over and over. You will also talk, uh, hear me talk about Aaron Judge playing center field more. And uh, I, I don't think that's necessarily the longer-term solution. I think it's shorter-term. But uh, they might be faced with it this year with Aaron Hicks there. And um, I, listen, the Yankee fan might secretly want Conforto too. It's more judge he and would be center. Great. It's more oh, judge and Paige, center. That's that's spot on. But he kind of, you know, he, he kind of fits very the nicely. mold, right? He could play right. Lefty. He could play left. He's another left-handed bat. He could. We could slot him in around six, seven, whatever. Maybe Decent five base runner, not a, not a base stealer. Doesn't but kill base it. Runner. Doesn't do anything super great, but he doesn't kill you. And he's just sitting there. He's got upside. He's got decent upside too. Yeah. I mean, the guy was an all-star a couple years ago. Yeah. Right. I mean, good clubhouse he's got power, guy, right? Exactly. Great, great fit in. Decent average. Good power. Let's say, I, I take him back at a Mets in a heartbeat. But I, you know, saying it, he does match up. Tremendous they, well they for the Yankees. Probably need, and you could probably get them cheap now, right? That was yeah. the thing. Like yeah, nobody wanted it. him when it was when it was five one twenty five, right? Right. Now it's, it's you know it's the thirty one of you know three one oh whatever whatever it takes. Not three one hundred. I don't know, three or I don't know, three eight. Not even. Yeah. <sighs> Not whatever. even now. Are you kidding me? I'm trying to remember what, what was the number. I was I was I remember I threw out a number way back. I was like, you should do like a two year. I think it was like a two year thirty, and everyone yelled at me. Sorry, right, two thirty five or something like that. That's like actually a great deal for Conforto, and the market may have pushed him there. Maybe where he gets approve it again, turn it back around, and then then you have time to still get the big. You contract. won't even have to give. Would you have to give him more than you give Rizzo? No. Yeah. You can give him the same deal. Two years, twenty eight million. Opt out after the first year. You want to go? You go. Yeah. You, you you prove it. Go go get your money somewhere else, or yeah. we'll bring you back. Yeah, that's He's true. not going to play. He's not yeah. going to play as much probably, but. He's a guy that could play himself into more playing time. Yeah. I mean, listen, you got to beat out Aaron Hicks, and then you're forcing them to play judge and center more, potentially, right? Potentially. But, it, you know, when Stanton DHs, you could have Conforto play left. When Stanton's out and left, you could play Conforto and right. And, and, and he's a decent outfielder, right? So it's yeah, like, he's not I mean, bad. He's, yeah, so yeah, your judge and center brings it down a little bit, but, you know, Conforto judge, I mean, that's probably a little bit down, but it's not, it's not insane on the, on the right field side. The uh, yeah, that's man. Well, oh boy, I don't want to see that. <laughs> I don't want to see him for with pinstripes. <laughs> it is a good fit, though. Truth be told. Oh, uh, Lou Monaco asks uh, asks dog if Riz provided Sunday gravy for gravy for you. Not the Italian kind, <laughs> but the, nice. the kind from the from the Rockies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Speaking of Coors Field. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Coors Field. Uh, Coors Field heavy? No, Coors something else. Uh, you can figure that one out. Well, should we we should talk to Rockies, by the way. What is going on with that franchise? Well, I look at. The, I, I mean, are they are they selling? Are they buying? Are they? You have what is going on? So here's the thing, right? They sour. I guess they soured on Story. Like they didn't trade him at the trade deadline. They got nothing for him now, right? And and they let him walk. And I don't blame them for not. Signing him to the deal that the Red Sox signed them the to. Pay, really they paid a rival to take Arenado, right? I mean, that's what started this whole that, deal, that, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's I mean, the whole the whole like pattern of behavior they've been going on is strange enough. And then what did they do? They come the, back and sign Chris Bryant, <laughs> who's, who's not. That's that's I who guess, we needed. I guess you We've, could argue that you'd rather have Bryant than Story. We I don't dump, think I would. We finally dumped all this talent so we could finally shoehorn in Chris Bryant. What? <laughs> How about the Rays being in on like Freeman? I remember Solaire. That was that was Solaire. a big surprise move. Yeah. No, Miami. Oh, no, Miami. Miami. Oh, you said Rays. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rays. Uh, sorry. I I thought Bryant would have been a guy that the Rays were going to go on. Yeah. And they were, I guess they were looking to do something with Freeman and they were going to give him, they were going to give him years and term. But, uh, so I was surprised at that. Yeah. I thought Bryant would have been a per perfect guy because he fits exactly what they want to do. But I don't know, maybe, maybe the Rays are starting to look in a different direction. And this is what I thought. I'm like, why would the Rays go so hard after Freeman? Why? It's totally the opposite of what They're they've normal. been trying yeah. to do. And 
I'm thinking, hmm. And that's big for me, you know? <laughs> big for me. Big thoughts. I, and I'm like, you know what? This new CBA, right? They're, they're, supposedly, they're going to outlaw the, the shift. I mean, I don't know how you outlaw it. I mean, I don't know if they're going to put lines in the field. I don't know what they're going to do. I hope in the end that they decide we don't really need to do that and yeah. you could just shift That's and kind of embarrassing, play any kind frankly. of defense that you want. Like both sides, right? Yeah. I, I, like I just, the, the, just, the league I, and the players, shift. really? If you want to shift, shift. Learn Let to, people learn, hit, learn to hit it the other way. Yeah, it's how hard is it? And, and uh, pretty hard. then I'm thinking maybe – the Rays are trying to stay that little echelon ahead where they're like, well, you know what? Look at Freddie Freeman now and look at Freddie Freeman in a year when you can't shift against him anymore and look at him aging into that contract where you know that the Rays are never – I mean, they started to do it. They got Nelson Cruz for, for a flyer for the stretch run. But they're, they're, they're not the type of team that – is going to have guys like totally locked into position. They're they're you know they're going to go mostly with flexibility around shortstop where they have Wander Franco, another guy took the money right. Yep. Um, and and maybe they figure we got Franco, we got Freeman, no shift. Maybe we change the way that we do business a little bit, and and maybe that makes Brandon Lau even a little bit better. And he just plays second base all the time, and you know we plug in outfielders here and there. And we just keep streaming the pitching, so maybe maybe there is something to it. Maybe my neighbor Paul is right about Freeman that that he with when they start outlawing the shift or whatever, that he, that he'll get better. It certainly should that's make lot, Stanton that's, better. There's a lot of I'm about <laughs> saying there's a lot of guys you could say that with, right? I mean, that, that obviously they've done the shift for a reason, right? To cut down on the guys' average yeah. and so forth. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I that just bumps me out the fact that, <laughs> that we actually have to we actually have to take that step. Um, yeah, baseball, I hate baseball that. doesn't I, need that. Uh, no, learn, learn to hit the other way. Open it up to more guys. So, yeah, that's just our talk. By the way, dog, I don't know why it's not letting me open up like the full chat here, but I, I think we missed. Oh, let me see if I can get more comments in here. The comments have been like on yeah, fire. Today. Yeah, we got we got the everyone. You know, people are waiting for baseball. I, I, you know what? Finally I got baseball back. <laughs> I think I think Sunday afternoon at six is the new time <laughs> slot. It's gonna be totally inconvenient, but that you know. I'm people... telling you, this is like the longest commute I've had in two years. <laughs> I know. You're welcome. Uh, so I put my the, my lovely hair. Yeah, your uh, keyword your hair. <laughs> exactly. Wake. Oh my god. My god, my sunburn's really showing up too. Yeah, that's good though. I mean, you do. I mean, I can't hide hard. anything with this light. This, this light is in my head now. Well, we're gonna have some <laughs> outdoor light. Hopefully, the uh, the uh, the you know the Riz backyard will be done soon, and we we'll go. be able to we'll be able to do some shows outside. The swimsuit edition. Yeah, not, maybe maybe for you. <laughs> oh yeah, that would raise ratings. Oh it's yeah, not gonna be us. Maybe. Um, <laughs> it there's just so much happening in in uh, in baseball, and they're they've barely taken the field, right? It was good to see yep. that the game started on St. Patrick's Day, and we got to see some of the green hats and that was cool. and and all that. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it out to the city to see you guys, so I celebrated by myself uh, last night on St. Joseph's Day with a little uh, Jameson and DraftKings and the TV. Very nice. <laughs> as, as, as you saw. Oh, what a good combo. <laughs> oh, yeah, why not? Yeah, that's, that's uh, you know. But, uh, but, yeah, we're, we're starved for, for, uh, for baseball at the major league level, and we're starting to get to see it here. We're in the first week of uh, the truncated spring, but we get spring training games. And we still have some of these, not, not, maybe not the top echelon free agents, but there's still some pieces yeah. that are good pieces, solid players that are going to fall into place. Jorge Soler, three years, $36 million, $12 million a year for the World Series MVP to the Marlins. It's a great deal, yep. especially now with the DH, right? Yep. I mean, he'll probably play the field at least half the time, I would think. Yeah. But it, again, it, it's these National League teams are, are, are able to get steals on some of these guys and, yeah. and, and open up their flexibilities. Look what the Phillies did. Yeah. I mean, the Phillies signed uh, yeah, Kyle both. Schwarber and Nick Castellanos. Yeah, the, uh, both, uh, both East are going to be tough. I mean, the East, the East are tough, and the, and the NL West is still just going to be such a nightmare. Oh, yeah. That uh, it, it shapes out to be a great baseball. I mean, I said, I mean, the Mets have, have loaded up a ton, but you know what? The other teams in that division, even the Marlins, are adding stuff on there, and they always well, have that young pitching. They have that. The pitching. I'm like, that's going to be a tough division. 
And the Top Nats, you never know. You know, the Nats did Strasburg coming did back. Say, did we say that last year? They absolutely sucked. <laughs> I, I seem to have a flashback into this one. I'm like, yeah, I remember how tough Dan Elise is going to be. We were a disaster. Well, Strasburg <laughs> didn't pitch. Yeah. That, that kind of, you know. Yeah, like, the entire you, team side. not Scherzer and Strasburg, <laughs> you know, coming off of, uh, uh, you know, the, the truncated season and, and winning it the, the full season before. You figured that was going to be a pretty big deal. But, you know, when, when, when yeah. half of them are hurt and then you decide to trade Trey Turner and Max Scherzer, <laughs> well, you know. Um, so a lot of excitement in a lot of places around baseball. And, uh, dog, I'm not going to forget to do it this time. So it, it – it, Let's see if this works. There you go. Cross okay. the fingers. And because you know what I'm trying to I get to, to see how old, old that Riz has to go through on yeah. this. It's not easy. Without the producer. Who's Without the producer. Sunning, yeah, sunning himself in Florida. Right now. <laughs> Producer's Avery. But uh, as as we get toward the stretch run here in the uh, the last uh, what three innings here uh, is it the last three it's the last inning the last inning we do sure. uh, one of our favorite segments that we do on most shows and we call it Die Hard Dads. Okay, I got a proud dad moment. So uh, my daughter is, as you've heard a million times on here, is a is an avid ice hockey player. But her other sport is softball. Now, decidedly for her, most of her time goes to goes to hockey. And then when it's softball season, you know, she's doing a little bit in the off season, but not much. And then it's, you know, she's got to catch up a little bit. Well, fortunately for, for her, the way that her school works, they're one of these northern schools, and, and a ton of them do it, baseball, softball. They have these trips to, to Florida. They go down in that, that area by Universal, which I think you've been there, right? Yep, yep. And uh, they, get to, they get to go as, as a team. You know, you, you, it's, it's not complimentary. Let's just yep. say that. So, uh, but hey, if you're there, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's great if you can make it. Now, she's, not, she's, she's more of like a JV player. You know, at this point, and, and the team that she's on is very, very good. There's not going to be, you know, a lot of openings. There's not much room for, you know, for, for her to, to bang her way on there. But as that she's one of the ones that are down there and the coaching staff is, they're just great. They're just really great the way they organize stuff. And, and um, you know, they're just, they're, they're, I couldn't ask for, you know, her to be in a better program than the one that she's in in, in high school. They have like two games a day, so they let some of the newer and and less accomplished players, you know, like get in and 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 get some at bats and stuff. So this is kind of like a big deal for her. Like she hasn't really faced that. Like if it was hockey and she's like she played up a level this this year, and you know, sometimes it didn't go so well, and other times it went really well. Like she kind of figured it out. Yep. So today, she was she was playing, and and Debbie Rizzo is. Uh, is getting me videos. I'm like, just get me videos of the at bats, no spoilers. First thing she says, she struck out, then sends me the video. I'm like, did you not get the part about the no spoilers? <laughs> oh, to p- first pitch, good cut, you know. Second pitch, girl throws a, a good strike. Third pitch, she elevates her. She tried to catch up to a good cut. She just, you know, she just got beaten. Uh, next at bat. Bunts down third, legs it out, and uh, I give that her. I give her credit for her first ever varsity ish hit. It's not really an official game. It's so a hit. it's a hit. Come on, that's, that's it, oh, legit. it's a hit. That's oh, legit. That's there's legit. no question about the hit. That's legit. That's legit. There's no question about the hit. The varsity is a little that I'm stretching it there, but like you know, she's playing against like pretty good competition, so it was pretty impressive. I, I sent you the Vars- video. Varsity hit to me. I count it. I count it. It was a it's great a punt. She and the third yeah. baseman was playing it. I mean, in softball, my God, it's like they're trying to block a punt. Yeah. You know, like if you ever pulled it back, it's like you could kill somebody. It's crazy. Yeah. Those girls are amazing. Uh, but she gets the bunt down, and the girl gets to it, and phew, all of a sudden she can run. I'm like, this kid hates. She always talks about how she hates running. I'm like, sent the video around. A few people were like, oh, she's fast. I'm like, wait a minute, I got to look at that again because I wasn't really looking. I'm like. Oh my God, she's actually she's cooking. She's cooking down there. <laughs> so that was my proud dad, proud dad moment. I don't know if That's there's cool. any more in the offing, you know, this season. I, I I doubt that she'll 
that you'll get that kind of look. But for today, print it. It is. It, I'm putting it in the books. There you go. Very Good nice job, Luisa Rizzo. There you go. It's very goody. Uh, I am going to go with uh, Noreen. So number four, daughter three, um, for me. So uh, <clears throat> so she's doing her dance. So her dance is her her big uh, her big thing. So just uh, just had a competition now. So they're they're kind of kicking it back. They're filling it to uh, competitions, no masks and stuff, which is which is really big when they're dancing. Obviously, it's it's hard to breathe and it's all about the expression, all that good stuff. So uh, so it's great to see her out there, you know, be able to do um, do her 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 art at the at the peak. And uh, she just went out and had a uh, first competition of the year, I believe, or first or second. Um, got to see it on the live stream, so that was uh, that was good. I actually had to watch. I watched that before I did the, the commute up to uh, to the studio here, <laughs> um, so I caught that. Uh, great job with a, uh, a duet and a trio and uh, a solo that she actually chore choreographed herself. Oh really? And, oh really? So very uh, very sharp, and all three got uh, got high marks on on all three. So a great start to uh, to the dance season for Noreen. So and a proud diehard dad. All right, I think that's gonna do it then. Get dog home before it's. Too, well, it might be a little dark, but you'll you'll live. It's all right. Not your first rodeo. You'll don't, get home. You'll get home. course lights. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get home quick. I'm, I'm hydrated. <laughs> yeah, you better be. Um, once again, for all your printing and promotional needs, it's fmsgraphics.com. A family-run, family-owned business for the last 50 years. All your printing and promotional needs can be taken care of in one click at FMS graphics.com and if your vehicle needs a washing you are finding yourself in the bergen or passaic county areas of new jersey then you need to go see big ed's car wash in fairlawn that is the place to go he's got a 118 foot tunnel you're gonna have to wait a second all right sorry. he's got a 118 foot tunnel does everything clean and green big ed's car wash in fairlawn new jersey tell them diamond diehards sent you I've got an alibi for Uncle Paul. Oh, boy. Okay, we got the game at the end. And you, you knew this had to go when we were talking to LC from the Mets. The worst scenario about the Mets in the offseason is having kept Diaz. <laughs> 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 Just keep it real. <laughs> there we go. Compared to the rest of the guys in the league, it's been it's he been a rough few well years year. for closers. It was. Pretty he's, good year last year. He's he's It's tough. It's tough landscape for closers in 2022. He's still better than most of whatever else is out there. Go find like five guys that you want more than him. There's not a lot that are really like reliable. Even from this like year to year thing, it's like, you know, it's whoever's kind of getting hot. Look at the Braves. They were just yeah. using whoever got hot. Yep. Tyler yep. Nutsack, Matsick, right? <laughs> it was like nothing. It was in the independent league two years before. Then he's like, he gets every big out in the playoffs. There you go. Who would you rather have? True that. I mean, I'll take I'll take the I I have no problem with this. So he I, got uh, through his yips. Yeah, exactly. He had, like. a, he had a rough year. You know, he kind of dialed it down a little bit. So we'll see. He got rid of his familiar. So I, I think it was the combo of Diaz and familiar was simply too much for Uncle Paul. It was unfamiliar. And honestly, that's a lot of stress. <laughs> If you want to follow the dog, he's at Jeff Healy 8. That's the number 8 on Twitter. And you can follow me, Joe Rizzo, at Diamond Diehards on Twitter. If you want to follow us everywhere on social media, we are at Diamond Diehards. If you want to hit us up for doing some business, and we got another one and uh, just got an inquiry actually the other day. So hopefully they'll, they'll be on board for, uh, for the next show as we work a couple of things out offline then uh, you can contact us anywhere on social media. Join the Facebook group. Join the Facebook page. You can find us on LinkedIn, everywhere, social media, Instagram, TikTok. Twitter. The Twitter. Um, so check us out there and let us know if you want to do a little business. We're glad to do it, and you'll be talking right to us directly. There's, no, there's nobody else. It's just us. So that is going to do it for the first ever in person, together, Riz and the Dog, Diamond Diehards, radio podcast program. <laughs> going back. Like flashbacks here. Going back a million years. It's not the first time we've sat together and done radio, but it's the first time in about 30-something years. 
W F U V Airwaves. So, shout out to them. For the dog, Jeff Healy. This is Joe Rizzo. Diamond Diehards is out.